Greetings! Hello! Welcome, 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 welcome to the stream. Uh, I decided today, this evening, that... Um, hello. I decided this evening that, you know, I've been very productive, productive this week. I've had a very good day. Cameron's been going really, really well. well. Work stuff's been going really well. I thought I would treat myself and I would order myself some takeaway. And uh, the takeaway arrived late. And it was very good takeaway. Um, but the problem was it was quite spicy. So uh, <laughs> I'm all sort of sniffly and coffee because it was quite it's quite spicy. Um, so I apologize if I'm a, little, if I'm a bit snivelly uh, on, the, on the stream tonight. But hello, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for being here. Lou is here. Hello, Lou. Good to see you. Mysterious is here as well. Thank you so much for being here. Always wonderful to have you. Um, for another... Clear the sinus is real good. Yeah, it has. And like, so I... Um, I had a, a vaccine yesterday, so uh, I found out recently. So I don't know if this is a UK thing or if this is like a global thing, but in the UK, when you're a baby, you get this thing called the MMR vaccine, and it, it, it protects you from measles, mumps, rubella, um, and uh, you are uh, in New Zealand as well. Oh, fantastic! See, I, I was I'm always curious about this sort of thing because I was very much it's, it's such a um, just done thing here. Um, Ah, did I need a booster? No, I recently found out that I never got it. So uh, I was very much like, I need to get that right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so uh, basically, because I was I was getting um, I was getting checked for something else, and they sent me a vac uh, like a record of all the vaccines that I've had, and I was looking down it, and I, I was sort of like, there's no. The MMR vaccine isn't here. That's really strange. And I sort of rang up the rang up the 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 doctors and I kind of said, Yeah, it says it says I miss it. I haven't had the MMR vaccine. I just want to check. Like, is it just because it's like everyone gets it? It's just not on the form? And they're like, No, if it's not on there, it means you haven't got it. And I thought, oh well, good crap. I better do okay, can I get it, please? So I went and got it yesterday. Um and uh when I got it yesterday, I feel absolutely fine. But like, I feel like just all of this year, both me and Sarah, my partner, have just been sort of on the verge of being ill at all times. Um, so I feel okay. So it's probably good to, to to have the sinuses cleaned out. No measles renaissance in this house. Well, you see, that was the thing because I I had measles when I was a baby. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, I I I I had measles when I when I was a baby. So like like the charitable interpretation is um the charitable interpretation is that uh that because I had measles as a baby they thought they get they oh you don't need to get it uh wait a second your dad's a medic what I don't I'm I'm not gonna get into it here <laughs> it's a it's a very long boring conversation that you're not here for so I'm not gonna talk about it um <laughs> I'm aware my 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 dad my dad's a doctor my mum is a nurse um. <laughs> I'm not I'm not getting into it. Um but yeah, so I I thought I thought I would get it. I I actually do have it. So, um uh I I went to get inject. I went to get this vaccine yesterday, right? And um it's uh it's my birthday tomorrow. And uh so I went in and the um the 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 nurse was kind of going through my details and was just like just just so I can check your your birthday is is the fourteenth of March, and I, I sort of you know me being me wanting to make conversation wanting to kind of just chill out and put people at ease, I was just like yeah this is a little birthday present this is a little birthday present for myself, and nothing, nothing I even did a little chuckle, I was just like oh it's a little birthday present for myself, <laughs> nothing just just stony silence. This nurse clearly just wanted to to jab me and then and then get rid of me. Clearly, um, so I, that was that that was that that part of the experience was 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 not great. Uh, birthday antibodies. On the plus side, I I got to finally visit um, Glasgow Central Mosque, which is a beautiful building. 
Um, they still have the vaccine center set up there from from COVID. And um, it's a beautiful building that I've I've walked past many times and um, I've seen it because it's quite it's quite a striking building in the center of Glasgow, and uh, yeah I got to, I got to have a little walk around which which was really lovely. Um, it's a really beautiful building. If if you're ever in Glasgow, um, they also have a really lovely cafe and they have really good food and drinks. So so I would uh, I wonder if I've passed it. I I think it's quite. So it's on the other side of the river. So if if you think where Glasgow Central is, it's on the other side of the Clyde. It's quite far, um, quite far down river. So it's sort of by where the where the 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 um Cluth Clutha pub used to be, um, and uh, so like, if I think if you've been in Glasgow, you might have seen it. I wouldn't don't necessarily think you might have walked past it unless you've had to go to the sheriff court for whatever reason. I'm not going to ask questions. Um, if you if you know it's directly opposite the Glasgow sheriff court. So if you've if you've um, if you happen to have been there, um, but yeah, uh, so that was that was my that was my day yesterday. I do feel fine. I had a bit of a sore arm to begin with, and but I was kind of expecting to wake up today feeling a bit um worse for wear. But I'm actually okay. It's pretty good. Um, you know, if I didn't have autism before. <laughs> Anyway, right. Um, we're here to talk about uh, Camlin. Um, so let's let's head on over to head on over to that. So, um, episode five was interesting. The music for episode five was quite interesting, from my perspective, at least. So, uh, it more or less entirely comes out of the 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 piece of music that Di is singing at the start of the episode. Uh, the reasons for this were 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 twofold. Firstly, because it's it's a very strong melody, and it kind of led a lot of things came out of it. I didn't recognize this time's Welsh song, so it's a it's a love song. I think it means it's about first love. Um, it's fairly like I I, I found it quite difficult to transcribe, just because the, the 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 timing of it's quite strange. Also, all the versions that I found trying to trying to you know you know find a version that i could transcribe properly all of them were a cappella and 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 like like unaccompanied and and it's like solo a cappella and quite difficult to transcribe as it turns out um so i spent maybe two days figuring it out figuring out chords that went under it and and different things i could do with it and I was talking to Ella about this, and I was just like, "Yeah, I found this one really difficult to transcribe for some reason. Like, like the 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 way it sort of weaves itself, and and the timings of it are slightly off. Is they're not quite where you expect them to be. Um, the 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 strong notes aren't exactly where you'd expect them to be. Um, and then she was like, "Oh, uh, uh, funny thing there." And she sent me a picture of the book that she has of Welsh folk songs, of Welsh folk melodies specifically, and and this song was in there. And now I was like, I could have, and, and Ella was like, is this helpful? And I'm like, it would have been helpful two days ago. Um, but, uh, <laughs> so I, I looked at the sheet music, looked at the chords, and I decided that the transcription that I had done was, a, it's a technical term in the music industry, close enough. So, um, and you can sort of see figuring that out and figuring out what harmonies come out of it and, and things from the project file. So the, this this is one of those interesting examples where the project file kind of tells the story of of the scoring um because you've got you've got we rebuild over here which i think ended up being used in the episode uh once or twice and that that's just me figuring out the piece on the piano and then adding some extra fun bits um there's courage brackets old this was the original opening music that i ended up redoing because it didn't quite work um Gwen in the castle, uh, Alessa changed a lot of this one, which I which I, I really loved. Like, um, well, I'll talk about it when we get there. But uh, originally, this didn't have any string parts at all, and then when um, uh, we had a bit more time to record the music with this one, and Alessa was like, "I'm kind of interested in doing something for uh, Gwen in the castle," and so we spent. A few hours during a recording day, putting that together, and it's it sounds much more interesting as a result. It sounds much better, as well. Um, Nos da die is the music that underscores the end of the episode, uh, which I'm I've been informed is is it's quite powerful. <laughs> um, it's uh, 
it I, i'm quite i'm really proud of nostar die just because like it um it's it's it goes it's got three very distinct sections and 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 it goes through very various different moods as I, like it's very much it follows the scene in a way that i think most of the soundtrack doesn't necessarily do that but in this case it was sort of specifically designed for that going in the castle as well was sort of meant to follow a specific mood um and then finally we have um courage uh which is the 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 song that actually made it into the into the opening Hello, some poetry nerd. Good to good to see you. Incredibly powerful. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Nostar Carity. Yeah. Uh, I'm like we, we, I'm excited for next week to talk about the editing and the the, the sound design process. Um, there were a couple of things in the recording that um, that uh, Paul and I talked about when it came to. Um, <laughs> Walkie talkie technique, I guess. Um, just to just to really make the lines pop out a bit more and and we did we did a couple of very small but interesting things that i think um led to that scene being being as good as it was um i'm not saying that, that that's not me trying to take all the credit for it like obviously like everyone absolutely like you know pulled out all the stops for for episode 5 um but uh yeah the sound design part of it i had a lot of fun with so i think let's I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with we re, we rebuild over here, just so you can you can get the melody in your in your in your mind, and get and get the sort of the the, the themes, um, and then I'm gonna talk about this one, the, the 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 original version of the opening. Then I'll talk about what it how we changed it, and then I'll talk about the rest of the music. This episode's an interesting example of cannibalizing pieces of music and uh, cannibalizing unused pieces of music and then reusing them elsewhere um because this ends up th this bits of this appear throughout the rest of the soundtrack of episode five because you know i'd recorded it you know i'd recorded it and i'm like it sounds good it seems a shame not to not to show it so but we'll start with we rebuild which is a nice easy nice easy thing to to, it's just recycling exactly it's just recycling you know you don't want to you don't want to just you don't wanna just leave it in the project file for no one to listen to it like like i hate that that's that's that that, that just seems unfair somehow okay so this is we rebuild <laughs> So yeah, not much to to necessarily talk about there. Like it's just it's just the fantastic Imagero piano. Uh, I don't think it's run. Is it running through the granulizer? Yes, it is. So it's being run through a reverb and uh, a granulizer, which is also by Imagero, incidentally. Um, the fantastic Autochroma granulizer, which is where you're kind of getting that interesting little these little very very intense delay effect. And then you also have some belps <laughs> uh, from uh, the Sega Mega Drive over here um, being run through some EQ and some delay um, just to give it a really kind of bouncy sound. And that's also being run through the granulizer as well. So as much as it's a very simple track, it still feels like it's got quite a lot of depth, quite a lot of range especially when you bring in the chords. And 
like when I was putting this piece together, initially it was very much just I'm gonna just play this on the piano and figure out what I want my chords to be for the rest of the for the rest of the music. Um, I'm just figuring out where the tone center was, what chords worked, what chords didn't work, what key it was in, all that kind of stuff. Um, sometimes the best way to figure that stuff out is to record something. Um, sometimes you're like, hmm, need a bit of music here. Oh, great, here's the thing I made earlier that fits nicely. I actually heard a story recently that pertains to this. So apparently for Titanic, uh, I believe it's James Horner that does the music for Titanic. I might be getting that wrong, but whoever it is that did the music for Titanic, um sent a music cue to James Cameron called Sketch, right? And James Cameron went, ah, it's for the, 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 the sketching scene with Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet. Kate Winslet's on the sofa, you know, sort of doing this. Um, and Leonardo DiCaprio's kind of like, oh, drawing, drawing. Um, and uh, James Cameron's like, all right, it's great, fantastic, fantastic. Put it in the film. It sounds amazing. Sounds great. It is James Horner. Thank you. Um, Puts it in there. Oh, it sounds great. Fantastic. So later on, James Cameron is talking to James Horner. He's like, I love that cue you did, by the way, for, for the sketch scene. And James Horner's like, what are you talking about? I haven't, I haven't done that bit yet. And the, the piece of music that James Horner had sent, which was just, just him at the piano, um, just putting together this idea, this sketch, um, had sent had sent this file over being like as like a demo basically being like oh this is a this is a cue i'm still working on and uh james cameron was like that um oh right i didn't know well it's it's in the film now and and uh james horner was was quite was sort of like oh my god like james horner couldn't believe apparently that 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 this cue had made it into the into the final film i love stories like that i think i think they're wonderful um yeah, I thought that was very funny. Like, like I, I too can understand the the morbid feeling when a client puts an unfinished piece of music in the final product. Like, I've been, I've been in that scenario, and it's it's mortifying. And then for the for that particular piece of music to do really well um, over everything else uh, that has uh, that 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 you've made, great feeling. Reminds me of an article I just read about Final Fantasy X and to Zarkonand. I'll chuck it in the Discord. Thank you. I look forward to reading that. Um, I will admit, Final Fantasy, big gap in my cultural knowledge. Um, I I, um, I think I've only played one Final Fantasy game. Um, it's not even Final Fantasy VII. Like it's not. It's not even the one that that you're everyone's supposed to have played. Um, thankfully, I've never had that mortification due to always being my own composer. Yeah, see, most of the time, um, the, most of the time, it's fine. But just sometimes, just sometimes. Um, I had someone read something of mine on a stage that I sent them as a note and didn't remember writing, and that was hilarious. <laughs> oh, that's great. You see, if you don't remember, that's fine. If you don't remember it, that's a nice surprise. But like, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so like sometimes the best way to figure out how you want to write a piece of music is to just pl press record and play something, right? That's kind of what I did here. And then later on, I was like, I need a little bit of, I, th I think sad muted piano was what Lou said in chat. Um, I just needed something like that, that could, that could fill, uh, like could just go under, a c the I think it's the beach scene towards the end. I thought, well, if I just, you know, jig this around, add a couple of extra things. It'll be fine. So that, that's that's where that piece of music came in. So the next thing I recorded was the was the first version of Courage, which is right here. Um, there's no string parts on this because I took them all out. And then obviously, unless I didn't record any string parts for this because this wasn't the version we were using, so it sounds a bit bare in places. But like you get the you get the idea.
Good to see you. I've just realized a thing that I did that I'm like, ooh, that's quite good. What are we cooking up? We're listening to the soundtrack for episode five of Kamlin, and I'm talking through the process of how it was made, and uh, yeah, I'm just going behind the scenes of episode five's music. It's a lot more sort of, um, uh, what's the word? Not malicious. Um, it's just, it's, it's a bit more sort of doom laden, let's say. Um, and that was basically because I was ominous. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and that's basically just because like, you know, if you've got the melody, um, So that's most that's over a uh that's over a, a an F minor. And that's that's still mostly just uh uh where did I go from there? So that 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 was th those were the kind of chords I was working with, where it's it you like it stays very much. It is quite an ominous piece of music when you stick the chords underneath it, right? So a little bit of hope there. Quite hopeful. That was Basically, just did a descending scale. So it is quite ominous. It's quite an ominous piece of music, right? Like, like, and and I kind of leaned into that for for this kind of initial idea, because the monologue is about you know what's the value of courage, you know what's the, you know courage makes us do all these things and sometimes you don't survive, and. I was kind of focusing on that idea, this kind of idea of hopelessness. Um, so the start of it very much kind of opens the the, the the same way as in the actual piece. It's two guitar tracks. You know this. The you know this is old hat right now. Um, this is old hat by now. If you've been to the, all the music streams, it's two guitar tracks panned. One's panned slightly left. One's panned slightly right. <laughs> So that's, that's one take, and then you've got the second take. Just because they're two different performances, you get the slight kind of um, chorusy effect, but also like the little variations of it, just give it a nice little texture. And then also the guitar is running through the granulizer again, and the, the granulizer is just making just making this lovely effect on the guitar. If you ever listen to it, I believe it fades in as well. Yes, it does fade in. So sort of see what the granulizer is doing with all these little extra bits here. just adds just something a little bit extra in there just to make it sound slightly less empty and a bit more full and then I wasn't like I don't know why everything suddenly stops because it shouldn't like there's, there's there's reverbs and stuff in there it should keep going but it, it just it, it finishes and it cuts itself off um, 
And then when we bring in the repeat, so we've added a couple of things. The main one, what, first thing is we've got a, a big, some big guitar strums. You know. They're quite quiet in the mix, but they're just kind of there to... Just give it a bit more oomph. Um, and then we've added our delightful friend, the banjo. Except um, it's doubled, so it's doubled, and then one of the tracks is, has been put up an octave. Again, just, just blending it all together, blending it into a texture. Um, and then also, I forgot I'd done this, a very, very, very low bass guitar part. <laughs> On the very, very low B string of my six string bass. very low bass part. Just, again, that sort of ominous sound, especially when you get towards the end in this bit here. Just that really low bass guitar. This is that, that sort of repeating drone. Um, what else have we got? We've got... Uh, oh, yeah! So, this is an instrument that um, you'll see... Mm, bass guitar, very nice, thank you. Uh, this is an instrument that kind of features very prominently in this episode. Uh, all, the organ was was an instrument that I very much wanted to to use in this episode. I feel like it fit the vibe really nicely, and I think it fit the the tone that we were trying to go for. Um, it's two organs. Uh, the first one is uh, a reed organ. So this is the wonderful SD reed organ. Um, it's a contact instrument beautiful instrument what i love about it is that you can so uh, a reed organ rather than so a reed organ is, is kind of a smaller organ and uh, you pump air into it with your feet so your feet are on these two pedals two pedals the whole time kind of going doing this kind of motion pumping air into it and one of the things i love about this organ in particular excuse me this plugin in particular is that you can adjust how much pedal noise is in there so if you listen to this on its own those lovely wooden textures of the pedals. And it sounds it sounds big and full without being like overpowering, which I think is the problem I have with in particular um big pipe organs um but we'll talk more more about that when we get there kind of almost a religious feeling from the organ well i mean so reed organs in particular uh were used oh no i'm thinking of a harmonium the, the one where you sort of sort of pump it lap like like with 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 one arm um they were used by missionaries when they were traveling around um i've talked about this before but my uncle plays church organ so the the organ has always had a very um special place in my heart when it comes to using it in music. Uh, also, another reason why I really wanted to play around with organs for this one is that my partner and I were having a day out in Glasgow. And so if you've ever been to Glasgow, there is a fantastic museum called the Kelvin Grove Museum. It's a beautiful museum. It's one of my favourite places in the world. And uh, it has this massive pipe organ. Um, I think I think it's from... I, 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 I'm going to say... I'm going to say the 18th century but i could be i'm probably very wrong um it's this incredible beautiful organ and every day they do organ recitals so uh usually at like 1 p.m on a weekday 3 p.m on a sunday um they have a this rotating cast of delightful um organists who um play the organ to this 
to it. Like pe- people specifically go to the museum to watch these these recitals. It's always very sort of full, and um, yeah, like like if you're ever in Glasgow, I, I want to go to Glasgow. It's on my list to travel to. If you're ever there, please go to the Calvin Grove, um, Calvin Grove Art Museum around one o'clock or three o'clock if it's on a Sunday. Um, there is a non-zero chance that I might also be there. <laughs> Because I think it's because it's at one o'clock, and so I, I don't live too far away from the Calvin Grove, right? So it's it's not a long journey for me to get there from where I live, um, but uh, it means I can just go on my lunchtime and get and see an organ recital. That's just I just I love that. I just love that I'm able to do that. Um, kudos for the opening music. It makes my brain want to complete the song of poet Soldier King. Like it's not the same song, but it gives the same kind of folksy vibes. So we talked about this on a previous stream where I took apart the um, the the theme music, the the main theme for Camelin. Uh It's on our YouTube if you are interested in in checking it out. Uh, the the main theme was inspired by poet Soldier King. Ella sent me a playlist of music that she was very much just like I want Camelin to sound like this. And I really liked the opening of Soldier Poet King. I really liked the sort of main guitar riff for it. And then I kind of, the the, the theme sort of, the main theme came out of that. Um, so it's a, it's a big, big part of, so Soldier Poet King is, is a big part of um, the Camlin, uh, the Camlin story. Uh, uh, what else do we have? We've got a cello, the, we've got, right, so you've got a horn and a flute down here. I forgot to properly turn up. Again, just doubling up the melody. So we've also got uh, the Sega doing doing this again. The, the 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 horn and the flute just add a little bit of softness because the 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 organ's kind of harsh and you've also got uh, um you've got quite sharp guitar sounds so just just having the 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 horn and a flute in there just softens it just a little bit um because they're not quite loud in the mix like they're not at the front but they're just kind of So then we go into the bit that we ended up cutting. did end up using it elsewhere in this episode and i'll talk about it when we get there ominous build up inescapable with the buh 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 yes that was so i think because here's the thing like i'm at the stage now where we're five episodes in i've done five of these and i'm sort of getting to the stage where i'm like i'm really worried about repeating myself when it comes to doing these themes because you know you don't you don't want to just go through the same rounds again but the, there is a certain level of um, like with the melodies, for instance, there is a certain level of we're we're just doing the same. They're all starting the same way. So this, like, luckily they are starting to evolve. Like you know, for episode six onwards, they are starting to evolve in their own ways, which is nice. And they are starting to kind of have a natural variation, which I which which is kind of what you want. Um, but at this stage, I was just like, I don't want to just do it again, but with more instruments. I want to have a change. I want to have a palpable change in a section in the middle. Um, and then it all started on basically this idea of you've got this pulsing bass line. Um, again, my six string bass playing very low notes. Uh, 
um, played with a pick just to give it a bit more, bit more oomph, and then some really dramatic piano chords, just piano bass notes. And then, of course, because the piano is is going through the through the granulizer, you get some like little um, other sounds as well. Uh, I've got the strumming guitar up here, just to give it extra drama, more drama. This is fantastic. And then there's the cello playing a really low note. Letting it sit there for a bit, um, along with our delightful massive synth over here. Again, I kind of so I, I used the because the the the, the patch I'm using um, on massive uh, I made for the tower, which is why it's called Tower Synth 01. Um, very much using it as an organ patch, just because it's it's very very like like. It's got a very long tail in it. If I so like you can't really play melodies on it. Cause it's kind of too messy and, and it's there's far too much reverb, far too much tail on it. But it's very good at big chords. Which is which is what it which is what it got used for in the tower. It's still still going. has opened up to me. <laughs> You'll be pleased to hear that uh, Ross and I are currently in the process of putting together, um, <clears throat> getting funding together for the Tower Part 4 because we definitely want to do it this year. We want it out this year. I want it finished. I want to get it done. So as soon as Camlin is finished, Tower Part 4 is next on the docket. <laughs> it's the next thing on the next thing on the list because um, everyone's been very patient. Everyone's been very kind. Um, but I'm 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 very aware that the way that I make things and the stories that I'm wanting to tell and the stories that I'm writing, they're starting to move off in a different direction. And I'm very much just like, no, I want to finish this before I move on to other things. Um, because you know, I started writing the Tower in 2018, very different person to who I was in 2018, and um, very much trying to, very much kind of wanting to to sort of neatly tie up and close the book on the tower and, and get it finished. I've already started putting um very different world too in 2018. That's very true. But um I've already I've already got some music ideas together. I've already started putting together some uh, ideas for sounds and things that, that I'm gonna different palettes for things I'm gonna use. Um I'm excited. I'm excited to make it. Um but we've got to get we've got to make Camlin first. That was the deal. That was the deal I made. Um Speaking of the tower, in the tower there are a lot of synthesizers, and this soundtrack is no different, um, because we have uh, my delightful Moog grandmother, my baby, my pride and joy, <laughs> my beautiful, beautiful girl. Um, but she's she's sounding a little different to how she normally sounds. So first things first, yes, it is going through the granulizer. That's why you're getting all those little extra harmonies and sounds. Um, the other interesting thing, the other interesting bit. So regular viewers will know that I recently bought uh, another synthesizer that I've nicknamed the Nightmare Machine. Uh, I can unplug it so I can show it to you. Oh, it's heavy. I forget how heavy it is. This beautiful, delightful panel from a um 
from a Soviet era spacecraft. So this is the um, Lyra 8. The, the, the Lyra 8. It is an organismic synthesizer. Stop laughing. And um, basically, how, how it works as a synthesizer. Um, I did a stream uh, a few weeks ago where um, where I kind of played around with it. It's very good for. It's mostly made for ambient music and sound design um, because I'll give you a brief explainer. So you have eight dials here. These are tuning dials. You have to manually tune every every every. You have to manually tune all the dials. Um, it goes. You've got these four. <laughs> I'm having to do this with the mirror on the on the camera. You have four oscillators here, and then you have various different parameters. You've got a master pitch knob for these four, and then you've got um, a hold on there, a sustain thing. And the way it works is that these these eight channels all feed back on each other by way of these switches and um, different effects. And then up here, you've got an effects rack. You've got distortion, you've got delay, you've got an LFO. Um, but a really cool thing it can do is you can run an external um, an external input into the Lyra 8 organismic synthesizer, stop laughing, um, and use the LFO, the delay, and the distortion. So what I've done is I've plugged the grandmother into the um, into the Lyra 8 organismic synthesizer, stop laughing, um, and used the distortion and the delay on the... Um, on the Lyra 8 organismic synthesizer, stop laughing, um, to create this distortion effect that you're hearing in the uh, you're hearing in this in this track. Give me just a second, like like just just because just because we're talking about it, and I feel like I haven't talked about it enough. Um, let me. See if I can find the yes, there it is. Okay, <laughs> I see we're laughing in Korean now. So yeah, so so this this is the kind of sound it creates. This is what we recorded on stream a few weeks ago. Beeps, the high beeps specifically are coming from the grandmother. You can sort of hear the, the waves underneath. It's very dark ambient music. So a common thing that people say, say when they're talking about the uh, Lyra 8 organismic synthesizer, stop laughing, um, is that it's, it's a synthesizer that plays you. And it, it's not like it's um, it's not like something like the Moog Grandmother or the Microcore, or just synthesizers in general where you've got a keyboard where, where you can like send MIDI data into and like it's tuned and everything... Um, you know, everything's everything kind of fits in with um, everything else that you're playing. Um, this is very much like this is its own thing. It's kind of its own monster, and it's it's why I call it the nightmare machine because it's sort of it doesn't. You can't tell it to play something, you know, like like with with you know things like the the Moog or, or most keyboards, like. Um, with most keyboards, with most synthesizers, most instruments, you're telling it what to play. Whereas this, you're kind of just guiding it, kind of. It's hard to describe. It's it's a really interesting synthesizer. I'd highly recommend if you're into sort of noise music, just checking out, um, checking out the thing it can do. But in this context, I used it as a distortion um, and delay with the Moog Grandmother to get this this lead sound. Sadly, I am not Kai. I did tell Kai about it.
And Kai's response was like, why don't you just like like an instrument? Pfft, nah, that's not my style. <laughs> I I I wanna you know, I use, you know, kettles and washing machines and, and then I plug the washing machine into a kettle and then record that sound. Uh <laughs> Moira, hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. We're we're just taking apart the uh, the music for Camlin episode five. Um, specifically, we're talking about this track here that didn't end up get did, didn't get used in the final track, but in the final episode rather. Um, but it kind of we took a lot from it to to into the new one. Um, but then uh, we also cannibalized bits of it later on. Um, so yeah, so kind of if if you just hold the melody but also hold the kind of sound here in your mind when we kind of go through the rest of the rest of the episode that looks thoughtfully in my very loud kettle <laughs> so you might also notice there's a pipe organ here so this is a, a free plugin called church organ it's awful don't use it it's 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 not good it it's just it sounds on its own it sounds awful It just... It just sounds very plasticky and... Uh, sounds plasticky and like a, like it's 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 like being generated by like a like like the by like a, a MIDI patch kind of thing, like you, you can put a um, you can put a room on it, but it sounds even worse. It's just. And also my big problem with it, you can't change any of the parameters. You can't you can't edit anything. These these stops here, just pictures. Can't use them. It's just like as a free instrument, fine. Absolutely. If you just need it for texture stuff, go for it. But but do not like there are better free church organs. Like like I only use this one because I don't want to use the Spitfire one that I have, because fuck Spitfire audio. But um I, I'm using it here for texture because I have the, the, the reed organ, which is m much, much better. It sounds beautiful on its own um, for daytime or playtime. You know, this is the this is the, the reed organ. Listen to that on its own. Beautiful. Esteemed. You can hear the pedals. And also you can edit parameters. You can you can change the the, the You can change, change, pull out different stops. You can change the attack, the release, the velocity. Um, you can. You have different settings for different things. Um, yeah, it's just good. It's good. But my point is, my point is, <laughs> goddamn transfer looks bit for our audio. I am. Oh, I'm not getting into it. Um, but if you put them together. This works. Right? Bass on it, it just just That's big. like for this end section, I was going for a big organ sound. Um, and it's a sound that we'll come back to later on um, in the episode. So I'll, I'll, I'll play it through. I'll play this end bit one more time. So then, um, so then when we come back to other bits where we've um, where we've cannibalized this, you'll kind of recognize it. A little bit of Pink Floyd and something else big and bold at the end of it. Yeah, this episode five is very prog rock. I've been like as as much as you know. I've said this. In previous streams, for some reason, when I try to do folk music, it it comes out Mike Oldfield. I don't know how that happens. I don't know why that happens, but whenever I'm like, okay, I'm gonna make some folk music, I make something, and then I'm like, oh, it's just Mike Oldfield. 
which I think technically counts as prog rock or dad rock. I don't know. But either way, whereas this is much more like deliberately, we're going to do prog rock. We're going to, we're going to be very, I think it, it it's probably closer to doing to um, dungeon synth, which is a genre I do not, I do not get enough time to, to I do not play around enough with. Note to self, make a prog rock styled podcast. It is, it is, I, I have, I have many things on the list to do with prog rock. Um, point at the theme song, not prog rock, can do folk. <laughs> Proof. Thank you. That's, that's, that's very kind. <laughs> okay, let's, let's play through this. And then I'm very aware we've been at this an hour and I've, to, I've, I've gone through all of one piece of music out of, five so like <laughs> I'll, I'll start picking up the pace a little bit putting it in the episode it didn't work so we thought so we'd go a different direction first half was great but the second half didn't quite work the second half second half we wanted to kind of change it and actually make it sound a bit more hopeful so i'm going to sort of skip over to the track that did end up making it into the episode so it sounds mostly the same the difference is kind of in that second section um and i'll kind of you, you'll you'll definitely hear it when we get there, um, but uh, I'll just play the track and then we can we can talk about it. changes in the second half um very much changes in the second half there also this one has human strings played by the fantastic Alessa Catterall who pulled this off after one day like I sent her the tracks the day before we were due to record and I kind of said look I've not given you much time here like we can reschedule we can go to another week but she was like nah it's fine we can we can I, we'll, we'll, we can do it tomorrow and then she did um Alessa is fantastic hire Alessa to play violin on your uh, on your soundtracks she's very very good um so first half is very much the same uh the only kind of big change is that the bass guitar is gone oh ellen chat for uh bass guitar everyone um but it's uh <laughs> press f to pay respect to bass guitar um it has <laughs> 
it has been replaced by uh, the the grandmother. The grandmother rules once more. Um, with the most transgender instrument. It is, isn't it? Isn't it? It's not quite as transgender as the synthesizer, but it's it's close. It's close. Um, it's been replaced by a by a, a sexy Moog grandmother bass part. Not much to talk about. It's a Moog grandmother bass part. What can I say? It sounds amazing. Just sexy analog bass circuitry at its finest. Like, look at those waves. Look at that. Ooh, so smooth. Ooh. Ooh, bassy, bassy, bassy. Ooh. Okay, I'm not. I'm not gonna. <laughs> it's a bass part on the grandmother, on the Moog grandmother. Of course, it sounds good. It's the Moog grandmother. Um, <laughs> but the reason I did that, the 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 reason I did that was that um, I needed the bass to be more subtle in this version, um, for reasons that I'll talk about in a second. I needed it to be smoother. I needed it to be more legato, and um, the best way to do that was to use the grandmother. Um, and that's basically where that came from. Uh, I'll go through these tracks faster. Bass go burr. It, it, it does. Um, did you do an Alyssa instrument swap in a Grammy station again? No, no, we did not. Uh, this time around, it was it was in plain daylight in in my office. No, this sounds this is going weird places. I don't like it. Um, yeah. So yeah. Otherwise, the track is the same until we get to this section here at the end. <laughs> goes like very um making it weird <laughs> it goes very like small ensemble orchestral music first for like four bars um like bass there's, there's like there's proper traditional string harmonizing um and then also so the the first thing that happened was i added this piano part and then added the doubled up the sort of higher up part with the Sega the Sega bleeps and down here <laughs> it's not perfect but it <laughs> dreamy yeah it's nice it's good and then it, st it still ends on that on that f just to just be like don't get too comfortable it's not it's not all good um just to bring it kind of background full circle at the end um and then also also brought in the pipe organ and the reed organ straight away so you've got you've got these It goes very like it goes very like big church music for a sec. Because then, then if you add the add all the orchestral instruments to it as well, like the violin parts, <laughs> it's, it just it's, I I don't know. There's just something about that that's just very funny to me. Um, it's just, it feels very professional all of a sudden for like four bars and then it goes back to doing its stuff again. <coughs> um, hope? Is this... <laughs> hope in this post-apocalyptic fantasy soundscape? Likelier than you think. <laughs> um... so, the, so the melody is the same. It's just that the, the chords are slightly different. So let me see if I can remember what I did. Yes, that's what it was. So rather than starting on a on an F minor, so I thought, well, let's go to the relative the relative major of that, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, C sharp major, which is uh, which is down here. So then it goes.
which, you know, has a much, much more interesting sort of cinematic quality to it, right? Because you're, first of all, you're starting on the third, so the melody's starting on the third, so you're starting in the middle of the chord. So you've already got like a nice little, um, nice little, uh, uh, extension, uh, inversion. And then you end on the major seventh. Ooh, beautiful. Love a major seventh. One of the, one of the, one of my favorite chord extensions. Um, and then the, the, the middle chords are the same, so it's still, it's still, um, I think all of it still is there, man. So instead of going down, it goes back up again. And then just stays on the on the E flat. Until it suddenly doesn't. <laughs> so it's mostly just playing around like for the most part it was just taking all the minor chords and making them major chords and and kind of changing the ending so rather than going down it goes up instead and then that's that's that, that again the simple tricks are the ones that work the best we wanted this to sound more hopeful in the second half and mostly that was just a case of changing a few chords around and then adding in some extra parts which is what we did here um the only real thing that has changed other than the chords is adding in this this extra guitar part, this extra um, piano part, getting rid of the bass guitar, um, and then also uh, I had to because at this point I was like I don't want to I don't want to I don't want to record it. By this point I'd put the microphone away, I you know I'd put the microphone away, I'd I'd tidied up the studio after recording, and I was like I don't want to do this setup again, so I cut individual chords out from the guitar part I recorded here. So, man, I didn't have to re-record them. So, uh... All in the original. Was there any that I changed? I changed the pitch up? I don't think so. No, I just cut them out of the existing guitar part um, because I was, I was too lazy to record them again. So, um... If you ever feel like you're a lazy musician... It doesn't matter. Like, like it's a silly feeling to have. Like, I think there's always... The, the, the thought process of, um, am I doing enough? Healthy. Um, the thought process of, I'm not doing enough because I'm not very good at this and I'm lazy. Bad. Stop thinking like that. Leave my friend alone. Um, it is better to ship than to be perfect. Works, work smart, not hard. These are all very good aphorisms. But... Yeah, like my, like, as long as it sounds good, it doesn't matter how you made it. This is, this is the big lesson that I've had. Like, like, I remember speaking to some very professional audio engineers who worked at the same company that I work at, uh, the, the, the comp worked for the same company that I work for in the States. And they were telling me about their sound, their editing process and like how they mix and they master and they and they master episodes i just remember being like that's a whole lot of work <laughs> they're like oh yeah i do an export and then then i drag it into a separate project file and 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 do all this stuff to it and i'm like that's an awful lot of work i should probably do that <laughs> like so like Work smart, not hard. As long as it sounds good, doesn't matter where it came from. And in this case, I couldn't be bothered to set up another microphone and record again. So, like, yeah, states, <laughs> states, and don't know what they're doing podcasting. And that's where I started. I didn't know what I was doing when I like. I got Reaper. But Fifteen years ago now, Ugh. too long ago, and and I did I didn't know how to make music. I didn't know how to record music. I've never done any kind of um, course on any on anything music, music related. Um, 
And I just figured it out as I went along. And I think the same happened with podcasting. When I made Tin Can, I didn't know how to make a podcast. I just, I just like, I know how to do music stuff, sort of. I know how to make music sound good. How can I kind of do the same with audio drama? And it just sort of went from there. Like, I think... Yeah, never, yeah like... I think that the, the the saying is if you don't if if you don't you don't know the rules it's easy to break them. Um, I don't necessarily think that's true. I, I think I think no I think you know knowing stuff is is important and kind of learning is is important. But at the same time, like um, I think it's good to, as knowledge should be complementary, not instructive. Right, like, like, I, like all the stuff that I've learned about, you know, I've, I've cobbled together over years of articles and YouTube tutorials and people telling me things. Like, there's never been a case of this is how you do it. It's more this is this is what most people do. This is how some do it. Um, and yeah, sorry, I'm getting preachy. Um, <laughs> uh, I do open it as a new project file to make sure there are no points where I'm suddenly going to blow up everyone's ears. Okay, I'm not saying that that's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we don't really know what we're doing in this. <laughs> um, once you learn the rules, you can break them even more masterfully. Yes, absolutely. Right? Like, like. I think the more I learned about podcasting, and at the moment, the more I'm learning about writing specifically. That that's that's the thing I'm studying right now is writing, um, in particular structure, because I don't I if, I don't know if you've ever listened to anything that I've written, structure isn't really a thing there, um, and I've never really been been good at like planning series when it comes to writing, but my partner Sarah has been has been uh, doing a lot of cohorts with film and television she's been getting a lot of lessons in structure and like writing structure and i've been finding it really really interesting like finally learning what a five-act structure is good god it shouldn't have taken me to the age of 32 to figure that one out um <laughs> so learning that one <coughs> and uh <laughs> a structure this is an amazing thing you can write it out and then plot your put your plot points in. It's incredible. Everyone should do it. If only no more more people knew. <laughs> but like but but learning what that is, knowing what a five act structure is, it means that I can then go, okay, I can see where the shortcomings of this are. There are bits of this that I don't want to do. I'm gonna go do gonna change it slightly. Um like when I was making Middle Blow, um, what I did was I said, it's a monster of the week show. Here is the structure. And then it was like every every episode, it was like, right, how does this episode break that structure? That's kind of, that's how I wrote that series. And it was, and I was very happy with how that turned out. Um, it was like, how is this episode different from the others? And that, that was, that was, um, that really helped, I thought. Um. <coughs> Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna play the next piece of music, and I'm gonna have a big cough just because I've got a bit of tick, got a bit of a tickly throat. But this is Gawain in the castle. This is for the scene where um, Gawain is recounting being in Bertalak's castle in the episode, and um, this is the this is the the bit of music that that plays underneath that. I'm gonna go clear my throat because I feel awful. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's going in the castle. I feel much better now. <laughs> it's probably going to close up later on, but but hopefully I'll be hopefully I'll be fine. Uh, excuse me. So I do not know middle below, but now I want to. So middle below was the second show that I ever made. <coughs> it's um, it's about uh, two twenty somethings, um, and their cat, and their best ghost pal Gil. As they go between this world, the middle, and uh, sort of world of ghosts, um, known as the below. It's a show I'm very proud of. It was sadly a, a sort of, um, it was a show that we had plans to make more, uh, and we had a second season planned that had double the cast, and we were getting ready to record it, um, and then 2020 happened, and by the time that we all kind of found our feet again, and we're like, right, we've all we've all kind of got the energy to do this things started opening up again and everyone was really busy so it just it just got to the stage where it was like we need to we need to call this um which is a shame but it's it's i'm still it's a show i'm still really proud of it's it's uh, again like every show i've learned very much a lot about making stuff through it and also it was just good fun it was just really 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 fun got lots of very 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 fond memories of that show um i just realized i completely forgot to talk about Alessa's violin parts for Courage. So I'm going to go back and quickly talk about that. Um, so the first thing is we've got some pizzicato parts at the beginning. Running through the granulizer. And they're slightly different. And then here it's just doubling up the melody. So what that does, if, if, I, if I bring the guitars back in, it just adds an extra little kind of texture to the melody. Just that delightful phasing thing that, that I've, I've kind of, I really love and I've been using it for all of the series, really, um, where the melody sort of phases in and out, and you and so the the sort of dominant instrument that you're hearing changes as you listen, which I think is which is something that I didn't I hadn't done until I until working on this series, and I, I very much enjoy doing it, and I'm going to keep doing it because I, I it's it's fun. Um, and then when we get to the sort of big big i was gonna call it the big bit um the b section um you get just just some gorgeous violin parts um from a lesser Now if I just add, play that again, but with the with the cello part added. Just great, just amazing. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I don't really need to say anything because just listen to it. Um, but playing it all together, it just it just just sounds just great. like there, there was a little, there's a little articulation in this part down here.
that, that I loved it so much that if, if you look at the track, you can see that I cut it out and then boosted the volume of it because I was like, no, 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 people need to hear that. <laughs> like, so it sort of jumps out in the, in the mix a little bit. Perfect, brilliant, um, brilliant violin track. Um, so for Gwen in the Castle, uh, I'll talk a little bit about the the sort of st it's mo again mostly based on the reed organ. It's delightful um, SD reed organ, just playing lots of really lovely drones, lots of really big big two handed chords. Guitar part again. So again, so I said this earlier, but this this track didn't initially have any string parts at all, and it was just sort of organ and the and the extra piano parts. Um, but alas, it was very much like I want to try adding some violin parts to it. Um, so all the violin parts you hear, all the lesses. Um, and we, we kind of, initially she did two parts and she was kind of like, oh, you you know pick one of these, whichever one works best. And I was like, I kind of like them both. So I did the, the typical producer thing and, you know, panned them in two different directions and then played them together. I love that. That little that little extra hammer on at the end. So that happened by accident the first time. Like Alessa sort of played it and was like, sorry, I ran out of ideas. I'm like, no, 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 do that again. That was perfect. Just adds in that lovely bit of tension. So then for the middle part, it's mostly just redoing the intro from Courage again, right? Just with pipe organ. Again, reed organ, pipe organ, put them together. It's nice, beautiful, sounds great, full of texture. Pipe organ on its own. Doesn't sound great. Pat them together. Just fills in that midsection that's just not there. <laughs> and then uh, you've got the horn and the flute doing the melody as well. bit of softness to just just kind of taking the edge off a little bit um and then the violin comes back in for the final section Thank you. 
that's his violin part there. Just, I love it very, very, very much. I'm just going to stick it over the, the piano part so you can hear it. Oh, there is no piano part. Um, <laughs> I'll stick it over the, the, the reed organ so you get an idea of what it sounds. Oh, there's a cello part. Okay, I'll put the cello part in. This, this this section at the end because it just adds so much extra tension. Like you've just got you've got this you just have this violin part that that is refusing to settle anywhere, and there's just something really like like that just creates tension that way, and I really really love it. And 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 yeah, I yeah. Um, like I was, I was kind of already happy with the track, and then when Alessa was like, "I've got ideas with the violin, can we give it a go?" I sort of thought, well, "I mean, the track's done, but we've, we've got time; we can." And um, yeah, just transformed it. It just it, it works so much better, and it sounds better in the episode as well. Uh, it just sounds so much more um, organic and um, and alive. As a result, of that. that's the other thing. Actually, I forgot to say. So, if you this this is kind of a a trick that I've realised with orchestral instruments. If you have like one organic instrument, like one organic violin, you can put um, synthesised ones or sampled violins underneath. <laughs> Organismic. Stop laughing. Um, you can put. Um, synthesized or sampled orchestral instruments underneath it and they'll sound more organic as a result because you've got that one organic instrument like like if you li listen to the to these string parts again um <laughs> So the violin and viola are a lesser, um, but the cello is um, is a software instrument. It's the uh, Hal Halion Sonic SE3 that I bought years ago, um, which on its own... Which, you know... It sounds pretty good, but you can tell that's not a human player, right? You can tell that's not a, a direct recording of a cello. But when you add these two organic parts to it... It sort of tricks your brain. So yeah, like, like you, you don't need... You don't need to hire an entire string section, you just need one really good string player. Uh, and then you can sort of hide everything else underneath that. It's just smoke and mirrors. It's all smoke and mirrors. Um, okay, we are at 25 to 10. I've got one more piece of music to do. We can do this. So this is the piece of music from the end of episode six. Um, the the What I will charitably... Um, <laughs> no, I was going to say something. <laughs> Um, <laughs> gonna say the the scene where Gwen loses his head, but that that seems that seems a bit a bit harsh. Um, I love this piece of music. I think this piece of music is probably my favorite out of the whole episode. Um, it goes through three very distinct sections that kind of follow along with the dialogue, but the end result is you've got a piece of music that's actually quite interesting and and um where the fandom collectively lost their heads, along with Gwen. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
yeah, so I'll play the piece of music and then we can talk about it. Ella, hello! <laughs> You've just caught us for the, for the last piece of music that we're going to be talking about. soundtrack i've never done that before so uh if you, you can kind of <laughs> you can see listening to this track you can kind of see where we've where we've cannibalized other pieces of music right so um you know the 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 sort of organ parts you know this organ part took directly from the beginning of of Gwen in the castle here it's the same same part, just plunked it in the middle rather than the rather than the, the than the start, and then this bit is more or less taken entirely from the old version of um, the old version of Courage, which is this. So we, we we didn't we did end up using um we did end up using the bass part after all which is marvelous it's delightfully lovely bouncy um low bass guitar part um some little octaves there because because even in a post apocalyptic setting even in such dire scenarios such as this there is always space and there is always time for a little bit of funk <laughs> that's little funky bass octaves <laughs> what, the, what the hell is this what what <laughs> Amber, that is not appropriate. Like, like you can't quite hear it. <laughs> just, just, just hiding a little bit of subtle funk in there. Uh, Amber, you canonically exist in the Camden universe playing bass guitar. <laughs> The 
post-apocalypse happens and I, I choose my name as John Deacon, the bass player from Queen. <laughs> Also, I saw on Tumblr that people are now talking about Camelon, Camelon Sonas. That's just very funny to me. Um... <laughs> um... <laughs> okay, okay. So, <laughs> right. So, uh, the main drive of of uh, not the next brain rot. Um... Camelon. Camelon Son is great. I think that's fantastic. I love that. Um, so the main kind of thrust of this piece is uh, the Dirty Moog that we were talking about earlier. Where I've got the Moog grandmother running through the very heavy, heavier than it looks, um, Lyra 8 organismic synthesizer. Stop laughing. Um running through the distortion um to get that lovely and also a little bit of delay on there as well to get the uh get that nice sound That's how you get that sound. Amber's Kamala and Sona just standing on the t <laughs> distributing funky beats. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just what there's this, there's this big drama happening, and it's just me standing on a mountain playing Teen Town. <laughs> Sorry, no, I'm not. I'm, I need to. I need to. I need to. I need to curse you all with this as well. Hold on. So. <laughs> So, hang on, I'm going to I'm offline? That can't be right. Oh, YouTube's not working. That's very strange. Oh, well, I think, I think YouTube knows I'm streaming. Um, it's, uh... <laughs> Yes, but do you pretend it's a TARDIS console where no one is looking? I, I do tell you what, though. Like, I do love this. Like, like you've got these big Soviet dials and you've got so many, like, tactile switches. Ooh, ooh, I love it very much. Um, it makes very, very, very dark, noisy, ambient music. Um, but I do love it. The um, Lyra 8 organismic synthesizer. Stop laughing. Um... Oh, I need to get some switch sounds for Foley. So, are they still doing it? Let's find out. Um, so, Humble Bundle recently did a sound design pack. Let's see if I can find it. Melodic Mayhem. There it is. Is that still running? Ooh, and ends in 20 hours. Perfect. Okay, so. Um, I'm just going to need to close all these other tabs. Because <laughs> there's spoilers in them. Um, yeah, so. I got this recently. It's full of stuff, so it's mostly for games. But you get Foley Impacts, Foley Fire. Um, you get loads of royalty-free music packs. Um, Horror and suspense, suspense FX horror pack, action packs, medieval sound effects, environmental ambiences, Foley footsteps, Foley appliances, which includes switches and things. Oh, it's very good. Movement Foley cha will change your life. It's a footsteps pack. There's a car pack, steampunk sound effect pack. I love this. Um, yeah, computers and machines. It's great, and uh, it's like something like it's something like two thousand dollars worth of stuff um you can get it for 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 20 pounds it's great like I'm, I'm gonna put a link in the chat if anyone is interested if, if you are looking to expand your library good place to get it um i've been using a lot of these sounds in camlin um absolutely go go and get them so yeah so this track very much based around um 
this distorted Moog part here. And then when things kick off, um, I also added in, I think it's, is it, did I record? Did I just double it up? Oh no, that's what it was. So when everything kicks off, I added an extra part, which is just the same part, just up an octave. And then that's going through some bisexual reverb. It's a really big sound. This is bisex bisexual reverb. It is just look it's just, it's just it's bisexual reverb. What can I say? It's just oh it's good. I love it so much. I use it on everything because it's beautiful and amazing and bisexual. Uh, what have we got? Uh it's disaster reverb. <laughs> it, it's that it's that too. It is that too. Um so like just just as a little composer thing, right? So it starts off fairly quiet, right? So you've got the it's it's like if you if you look at the if you look at these these little clips over here, and then you come over here and you use these clips here, you'll see that they're the same. I just copied them over. Like like the opening is just we rebuild with an extra lead part added on the end. It's a very, very like quiet um quite sad sounding opener i very much wanted the idea that there was a sort of inevitability to what was happening that's the the idea that, that what was happening was going to happen and it couldn't be changed that was very much the idea i was going for with this piece of music that they were kind of um slowly moving towards something that they 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 couldn't control or couldn't change But I wanted it to start in quite a, quite a quiet, quite tender place, which I think is what this is what this does. This idea of quietly showing up and and seeing that you're in this beautiful place, um, and then the sort of inevitability of it comes in with the reed organ. is from uh, the Gwain in the castle. So it's, it's bringing back this idea of Gwain's quest um, using the reed organ. Not the pipe organ, just the reed organ this time around. And like, I also just really like having, just letting the organ have a moment just to breathe and just have this brief pause before it all kicks in again, before we start moving towards the end. But no one gets this show like you do. Oh, thank you very much. I don't know the Welsh stuff. That's that's the that's the other side of it. The Welsh side of it, I'm very much, um, very much just sort of listening and nodding, going, "Wow, oh, that's fascinating." Um, and and I do I do need to get back on learning Welsh because I I did for I I did do a lingo Welsh for hmm, a while and I've not gone back to it because um because. This is the Scottish episode. Well, well, there you go. Um, I didn't go back to Welsh on Duolingo because Duolingo, uh, they've replaced most of their translation staff with AI and I, just, I don't like that at all. Um, but yeah, so you get this lovely bit of reed organ in the middle 
and then everything kicks in. So we've got the lovely low funky bass line that we talked about already. Cameron blog posted a bunch of resources. For I do need to check that out. Actually, I think you, I think Ellie, you did send me a list <laughs> that I just need to figure out that I need to go through. Um, like genuinely, once Camlin is finished, I'm gonna like, I'm gonna hopefully have like a couple of months before I need to dive into the next thing, which will hopefully be the Tower Part Four. But I'm very much looking forward to working on myself, um, and uh, <laughs> and just having a bit of time to do some brain spring cleaning and and computer spring cleaning office spring cleaning and um i want to get like uh I've, i'm gonna sell some equipment and replace it because i i found i found i found a, a a new audio interface slash mixer that combines the mixers that i currently have and combines them together because I've, I've got two audio interfaces right now and i need to switch between them it's not it's fine it's not practical um, whereas this new thing I'm looking at is, uh, it will, will, will solve that problem. Um, but yeah, so we bring in the bass, big funky bass, uh, along with the reed organ and the pipe organ again. And like, I think... One of the the joys of using a sort of pre or, or a melody that kind of already exists is that you can sort of move with the ebb, ebbs and flows of that melody. Like like I was talking earlier about the piece of music, right? So so naturally is in F minor, right? Sorry, I. Had... <laughs> You can tell I'm absolutely like somebody that a composer who takes from jazz and that I can't help but add sevenths to things. So if I add the seventh, ooh, jazzy chords. Welcome to the Camlin Jazz Lounge. <laughs> Thank you for that link, Ella. I, no, no, I got it. I, I can, I can get the link, link from here. There we go. Pop that in there. That's our Welsh learning resources. Check that out. The smooth jazz episode. But yeah, so like, so you have this, this delightful. If you look at it in terms of chords, I'm sorry for interrupting the smooth jazz. No, 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 not at all. So you've got, you've got F minor. So that, that's, that's quite ominous with, with the chord underneath. Or at least very sad. But then you've got a little bit of hope with the A, a flat chord. And then E flat. Again, quite hopeful. That, mm, that doesn't sound good. Oh dear. <laughs> so that's that's. That's the sort of natural ebb and flow of the melody. That's kind of where the melody is taking you when you're when you're playing through it. Now, obviously, you can go in different directions. Like you can do what we did with with Courage, where instead of starting on F minor, we start on the relative major, which is C sharp. Um, can we make that jazzy? Hmm. And even though that sounds more hopeful, the melody still has that sadness to it, right? Like, it sounds like it's going somewhere. Slightly less stable. And it's, it sounds even more uplifting, though, when you go to that chord. I'm still going down. For the start, we went up instead. So it's lovely composing with these kinds of melodies because you sort of look at where the melody wants you to go. 
um, and then kind of see how that fits into the story you're trying to tell. Um, where in this case, it was like like I mentioned earlier, this idea that what they're trying, what they're doing, what is happening is is inevitable, and that there's nothing they can do to stop it. But there's there's still that hope there, and there's still that kind of uplifting feeling throughout the scene um, until there suddenly isn't, uh, and that's and it's nice to have that baked into the melody and the chords right away, and you're just sort of guiding that as it happens right so distortion is working with 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 this note here specifically there's something about that initial it does sound like it sounds sounds like a horn to me right it sounds like like a like a like a herald almost or like a bell doing is it's phasing in and out of what the organ is doing because the frequencies are very similar so they're kind of bashing up against each other so because of that it feels very feels very like tense and quite crushed um and to me, to me, sounds like a bell. Um, and then I think towards the end we bring in so we bring in massive again, right at the end, just to kind of add the just add an extra bit of organ texture. So the synth the organ pipes. Was like a sort of bass organ part um and then um alessa recorded a couple of uh string parts they're quite low in the mix but hang on let me let me get these for you uh, so there's a violin and then there's a viola part as well Just excellent. Just, just like, again, I think we, we rattled off the part for this quite quickly because we just recorded Courage and it's mostly the same violin part. So um, it, it wasn't, didn't take us too long to fire that in together. But again, quite low in the mix, but just... Another unfinished cadence. Because um, I think the other side of this as well. So for episode two, I did something similar with the S SD, with the reed organ. Um, 
as this kind of like building wall of sound, this kind of drone that gets gradually bigger and bigger and bigger. And in the case of episode two, it sort of stayed in one place and sort of started to wobble and get more distorted as time went on. Whereas with this, I wanted it to be a bit more dynamic and I wanted it to feel almost like thing like I feel like if you listen to it, the because you've got the bass underneath, like kind of very rhythmic, and then you've got the melody, which is slightly more irregular, it does feel like stuff is slipping away. Again, at least that's 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 what I take from listening to the music. This idea that like you're trying to grasp onto something but you can't quite quite get a hold of it. Um and that's kind of the result of everything in the music. That's the, the, the big organ parts and uh the melody being doubled up in various different places and various different instruments and um just the just the 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 the, the, the scope of it and the size of it, right? That's that's kind of what what I think it ended up sounding like and I think it works really well with the with the with the scene. Um yeah, so I I I I really like it, man. That's how are we doing for that's yeah. That's that was that's episode five. That's all the music for episode five. I'm um, just getting around to that pack. Two grand worth of effects for twenty pounds. I love humble bundle. It's really good. Uh, it it's it's definitely saved me when it's come to when with 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 Camlin. There's a lot of um movement in the series, and even just the movement packs and the footstep packs are worth the price of admission alone. Um. And like, there's just there's just a lot of really good like the steampunk packs are is surprisingly good, like like they've got lots of sort of weapon sounds and things that 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 I wasn't expecting, and some of them are actually really useful, which I I was just like I'll just put these and then I'll use them if I need to, but I have found use for them in Camlin, which is which I wasn't expecting at all. Anyway, so. That is that is our show. That is that is that is the stream for tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for coming along. Um, I really love the the music for this episode, uh, and it's been really wonderful to 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 talk about it. Um, presently, making stuff on a budget is fun, but damn it, making the right kinds of sounds is a pain, especially music. I get that. Like like, as much as I'm very much like you should record your own fully as much as possible. I get it. Like you know, if if you need. You know, if you have recordings of, you know, jacket handling and stuff, you're going to use those rather than setting up your microphone each time, putting a coat on and going every time you need to do that. I get that. And that that just comes from growing your sound effect library, reusing recordings and, and things. And that just that's just part of the process. And it does happen. Like um, my sound design library is now slightly obscenely large. Um and that's a mix of library stuff, but also stuff that I've recorded. Um, and I haven't labeled it properly. So it's at the stage where I'm like, did I record that? I can't remember. Did, is that one of mine? Don't know. Um, but yeah, it's a good pack. I highly recommend the Humble Bundle pack. Anyway, we'll be back on Monday. Speaking of sound design, we'll be back on Monday uh, talking about the sound design and the editing process for episode five. I'm also going to be talking about how it was, how it was recorded. Um... I did a lot of experimenting with um I did a lot of experimenting with stereo recording and stereo scenes for episode five, in particular when they're in the truck. Um and then also there's lots of walkie-talkie conversations in episode five that have sound design underneath them in the, under the walkie-talkie, which was an interesting challenge. Um and then we did something interesting at the end where we sort of merged the two scenes together of die in the truck and Gwen in a cave on the mountain kind of starting to bring those together and merge them into one scene and which was something that wasn't in the script it was something we just came out with with the sound design uh the the sound design process and it ended up sounding really interesting and 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 good and I'm glad we kind of decided to to pull that one out um but in the meantime I hope you enjoy the rest of your your what day is it Wednesday it's Wednesday today I hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday um and uh yeah I'll hopefully hopefully see you next week enjoy the rest of your week and um we I will hopefully catch you next week and hopefully catch you soon for more streams thank you very much good night <laughs>